Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Welcome guys, today I want to discuss this monarchical trinitarianism Okay, these people, uh, what is their view about the trinity? Okay, this is another type of the trinity So, <laughs> it's very interesting this view actually Because most people are not aware of this So when a Muslim comes in contact with this And uh, you want to press them on politism and uh, monotheism question you'll find out that they will just be agreeing with you they'll tell you that yeah there's only one god who is that one god the father so how can you say the father is the one god and then the son and the holy spirit are also god for a muslim you'll be like i don't understand what's going on here there can only be one god right so let's just expand on what is is all about okay so this view is, is pushed mainly by uh it's popular from dr bo branson and uh, Dr. Joshua Shijuade. You be familiar with Dr. Uh, why am I saying Shijuade? Actually, this is actually from my tribe. Do you know? Like, I think this is Yoruba. Yoruba. This is actually my language. <laughs> Shijuade. Shijuade. That's actually how it's pronounced. Dr. Josh, Joshua Shijuade. Anyway, uh, they are the ones that are pushing this view of uh, monarchical Trinitarianism. Getting their inspiration from uh, church fathers, like, uh, the, especially from the East. All these uh, Gregory of Nyssa and all these people, they they always emphasize on the Father, okay, being the sole cause. So they emphasize that the Father is the sole cause, and the Father is the is the is God. The Father is God, even though the Son and the Holy Spirit they also God. So how do we make sense of this? Uh, and most people should be familiar with him because he always goes uh, he goes to speaker's corner, and uh, you know I learn a lot from this brother, uh, doctor, uh, this guy. Uh, the Muslim metaphysician, Jake, the brother Jake. So he has had them on and many Muslims must have listened to this and be like, what are they talking about? So I just wanted to make this video so that you can understand it better. So look at this word. It all comes down from this word, monarchy. Okay, monarchy is derived from the word mono. Mono means one. Arc means rule. They can, like, just, it's just like one king, okay? There can only be one king and you have three individuals. So one of them is the king, so they choose the father as the king, okay? So in a way, the monarchy of the father, that's what they emphasize on, the monarchy of the father. The son is not the, is not the king, the Holy Spirit is not the king, the father is the king, okay? So this is the whole motivation. So if they want to say properly, who is God there? Who is the true God? If you ask them, is the father. Now, does that mean that the son and the Holy Spirit, they are not divine? So this is where you need to understand the difference between who is God and who is divine? Okay, a being can be divine, but it doesn't mean it's the God. Okay, and if you watch that video where I made showing you, okay, so in a way, let's just say this is the monarch here. He is, this is the monarch, and this is the Son and Holy Spirit, right? So the Father is the God, and the Son and Holy Spirit. They are, we can use small letter G to refer to them. They are gods. Anyway, and by the way, you would think that they are the first people to ever said this. No, it's not even the church fathers, all those are Gregory and Lisa that first pro, uh, made this proposal. The first people that you really see talking like this, you had people like Origin of Alexandria, okay? The dynamic monarchians. They are people, they believe the Son and the Holy Spirit, they are divine. So for someone to be, we say the God, this is the true God, the true God, ultimate God. Whereas the Son and the Holy Spirit, they are divine. <laughs> so what is the difference between someone being divine and someone being the God? That's where the problem now comes in. So them, they want to peg their monotheism on the Father. If you ask them who is the monotheism, who is how do you maintain monotheism? They will say the monarchy of the Father. Whereas the Son and the Holy Spirit, they believe they are the most divine being after the Father. However, in before now, the Father, okay. The Father was greater than the Son and greater than the Holy Spirit for that very reason. Okay, for this very reason, the dynamic monarchians, they will say the Father is the greatest. And the Son and the Holy Spirit, they are inferior to the Father, even though they are gods, meaning they are divine. Okay, so like, see, it's, the Holy Book is divine. The prophets are divine. Now, they don't mean like they are prophets, but they mean it in the very highest sense. The greatest being after the Father is the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what they are saying. They are not the greatest the ultimate, the ultimate is the God, the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit, they are divine. They can, now, this way, now gets complicated. 
them they are now saying that see the father is equal to this and they want to affirm co-equality in the divine properties so imagine all the divine properties that the father have the son and the Holy Spirit now have it okay that's where the problem comes that's where people are like what are you talking about but if you strictly speaking if you check it very well they cannot even make that move in the in the strict sense at the end of the day the father will still be greater because what did the father have that makes him selected out of the three if they all have the same properties okay it's not like they voted that the father should be god no the father is god for the reason that only the father is unoriginate the father caused the son and holy spirit to exist okay that is the reason why the father is the ultimate god and that is why he is the god these two beings even if you want to grant it they will be the most divine being after the father the greatest being after the father so they will still be subordinate to the father and greater than every other thing else that exists so this is how they maintain monotheism by pegging it on the father if you ask them how many gods do you have they can even say we have three in, in if you ask them if you have father is god son is god and the holy spirit is god don't you have three gods they will say yeah we have three gods but no the true god is the father this is where it gets complicated but i hope you can understand it and this is how them they are trying to move around this issue of monotheism and politism okay and Bo, uh, dr bo branson actually he admitted that see because we, we believe this is allah right and he said the muslims when the, in the quran is talking about uh the allah is the third of the three so he said oh, this is the third of the three some christians believe this some christians were monarchians so this kind of thing applies to them in a way uh so i hope you understand it now gods these gods does not mean they are literally gods they are literally the god they are just divine okay and by the way some people were even called gods in the bible in uh, psalm 82 or something they were called gods why because god chose them to be called they are they are closer they are much more related to god than every other persons just like we can say the prophets we will not say the prophets are gods but they are divine in a very strong sense more than everyone else so doesn't mean that they are god because they are divine as long as the father, son and the Spirit, they lack something that the father have which is a divine property they will always be that divine property and uh you see dr joshua sijuade uh, sijuade <laughs> let me call his name properly is trying to avoid this by saying aseity does not matter remember that property of aseity which is the property of being on cost they want to say that it doesn't matter and we, we want to say it does matter. That's why the father is the monarch here. If you don't know, this is why the father is the monarch. They didn't choose him. He is the monarch because he's a say. And the son and the Holy Spirit are not. That's why they are not the God. So <laughs> this is a video. Maybe if he sees this, let him uh, understand this too. Even though he's more knowledgeable on the subject. But this is the whole point. We, we can see through this. We are strict monotheists. We agreed with you. The father is the only true God here. The Son and the Holy Spirit, since they lack a satiety, they cannot be God for that reason. And you cannot say that they are co-equal with the Father because they lack this divine property. We, we say this is a divine property. They lack it. Therefore, this will be the case. So, I hope you guys understand this. Let me see what you think about this. See you guys later. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.